This lecture is about diffraction and Huygens' principle. Huygens' principle states that every point of an advancing wavefront is a new center of disturbance from which emanate independent waves in all directions. This can be a little strange, but I think it'll start to make sense if I give you a kind of visual example. So first of all, what does this principle mean by a center of disturbance? Well, a center of disturbance is a kind of center from which disturbances are radiating outward in all directions. An example would be if you throw a stone into a pond, the place where the stone enters the water is a center of disturbance and waves spread out in all directions from that one point of disturbance. So as an example, if this red dot is a center of disturbance, waves are going to radiate out in all directions like this. So Huygens' principle says that every point of an advancing wavefront is a new center of disturbance from which emanate independent waves in all directions. So what that means is that if we choose any one point on this advancing wave, it behaves like a center of disturbance. So I chose that point in the middle and we can have a new wave radiating out in all directions. I've given this new wave the same wavelength as all the other waves in this wavefront. So you can see it has that same wavelength. So this is a little strange because if we're imagining this wavefront moving forward, there's no reason why it would suddenly radiate into a circle. And the reason why it's not doing that is that that one point is just one point on the wavefront. And what Huygens' principle is saying is that every single point along that line is behaving like a new center of disturbance. So I could put more points here and draw the waves radiating off of them because they are centers of disturbances. And I could add more and more. And you can start to see a pattern where there's one very specific spot where all of these waves are overlapping, and that's going to be right here. So that's where the next wavefront occurs. So what Huygens' principle is saying basically is that if you take every single point in a kind of straight line wave and model it as a center of disturbance, the waves radiating from all those centers of disturbance perfectly cancel out to make the shape of the wave that you're trying to predict. So here that's just going to be another straight line. That's where the next wavefront will occur. So why do we care about this idea? Well, this can help us predict how waves will interact when they hit barriers. When waves of light pass through a small opening in a barrier and as a result radiate out in all directions on the other side, we call this diffraction. This is a result of Huygens' principle. Every part of the wavefront would spread out in all directions, but most of the wavefront is blocked by the material, so the part that can spread out is not interfered with as it spreads. So we can imagine this wavefront approaching the solid barrier. And when it hits the solid barrier, most of the wave is not able to move through the barrier. The only part that is going to be able to is this small point in the center. And I know that every single point along that line is behaving like a center of disturbance. So that means that on the other side of this barrier, the wave is going to radiate out in all directions like this. So this is how the wave is going to behave when it moves through a very small opening. It's going to change from all moving together as one kind of solid front to spreading out in all directions like this. So this is what happens during diffraction, when a wave of light passes through a small opening in a barrier and as a result radiates outward in all directions on the other side. We can use Huygens' principle to predict the diffraction pattern for different shapes of barriers. To use Huygens' principle to predict diffraction patterns, we're going to start by drawing points on the wavefront only where it is not making contact with the barrier. Each point will be a center of disturbance. These points can only propagate when they're not up against a barrier. So I'm only going to draw points where there is no barrier. Next, draw circles around each center of disturbance. The circle's radius should be exactly one wavelength. So if I draw those circles, this is what that looks like. Next, we're going to draw a new wavefront along the line where the circles meet in constructive interference. So that's going to look like this. That's where all the circles are meeting together in constructive interference and not being canceled out by other waves. So this is what the new line of the wavefront will look like as it moves through the barrier. This kind of makes sense if we imagine water impacting a barrier, we would imagine on the other side the water would kind of begin to spread out back toward the center like this. We can then repeat this process to find the next wavefront. If I were to draw more dots along those lines and draw circles around them, this is what the next wavefront would look like. 
and then this one would be the one after that. So the wave kind of returns to normal after a certain amount of distance. We can observe the same barrier, but now with a longer wavelength. So I'm making bigger circles now because the wavelength is longer. And when I do that, this is the next line of the wavefront. There's one diffraction pattern that produces important and predictable properties, the double slit pattern. We're going to discuss this more in the next lecture, but this is what occurs when two small openings are made that the wave can move through. When this happens, this is how they radiate out, and you can see that there are going to be certain points of constructive and destructive interference. We're going to talk about that later in a separate video called the double slit experiment.